I'm Sebastian Lehmann, Head of Investor Relations, and I will guide you through. As usual, before we get started, please carefully read our legal disclaimer. There is a fundamental change of the mobility industry, and this change is even accelerating. And as this has a tremendous impact on the business of engineering services providers like EDAC, I would like to explain to you in a bit more detail what this transition really means and looks like. So please follow me to the next slide. And this is a bit more complicated. So I will have to explain in more detail here. First of all, we have to clear up with a common misunderstanding. Many people think that the fundamental transformation in the mobile industry is currently based on the shift from internal combustion engines to electric mobility. But that is just one part of the transformation. There are two other facts that I would like to explain to you here. First of all, we have to talk about electric architectures. What does this mean? Well, please look at the left side of the chart where we have the schematic illustration of today's infrastructure of a car and tomorrow's architecture. Today and traditionally, OEMs are developing a car and then they are integrating a large number of ECUs from a multitude of suppliers in their cars. So these ECUs have different functions, for example, for air condition, for braking system, for your infotainment system, etc. Now, the problem here is that these ECUs are usually supplied as a so-called system solution. This means the supplier is not only supplying a piece of hardware, but also its own embedded software on that ECU. And this software controls the respective function of the ECU. And now, if you look into the chart and see the different ECUs, this mixture of ECUs is or makes it extremely complex, if not impossible, to fulfill two major needs of the car of the future. The one major need is software updates over the air, and the other one is a holistic connectivity and cybersecurity. So to fulfill these two characteristics, the software-defined car requires a totally new electric architecture. We have put a schematic illustration right here on the chart. So the electric architecture of the future will be a centralized or split into zonal zones. Central high-performance computing systems will process the incoming data of the car and give corresponding commands to actuators in the car. As a consequence, there will be less ECUs in the future car, but more actuators without embedded software. Now, the separation of hardware and software will disrupt well-established tier value chains in the automotive industry. And this is just one part of the transformation. Let's move on to the right side of the chart. Here you can see the schematic illustration of the three layers of the software-defined car. So far, we have been talking about layer one, the basic hardware infrastructure. Now it's comparable to your computer at home. When you have your basic hardware infrastructure, you need an operating system to run that computer. And it's more or less the same with the car. In order to control the car functions, the data streams, the gateways, an operating system or a so-called car OS is necessary. And this is the layer two of the software-defined cars. For automotive OEMs, this is currently a buy or build, sometimes also a buy and build strategy. So we see some OEMs are trying to develop their own operating system, whilst others are buying them from big tech companies. And as we have recently read in the press, there are also OEMs that are developing one part of the OS and buying another one. We will see which way will prove to be the right one, but one thing is for sure, until then, there is a lot of development work to be done. So now, once these two first layers of the software-defined car are ready, there is the third layer, and that's the application level, uh, layer. So there will be some basic applications in the future car that are necessary to run the car, but there will be more kind of an app store maybe, where you can buy, you as a passenger can buy different functions from different suppliers, from tech companies to in order to do some online shopping, video games, reading or whatever in the car. So these are the three layers. And uh, finally, there is another, let's say, cross-dimensional layer, and this is cybersecurity. 
OEM will have to make sure that cybersecurity will be an integral part in the entire development process across all the three layers. This requires new development processes and cooperation between OEM, suppliers, and engineering services providers across the entire value chain. So to sum this chart up, the fundamental transformation in the mobility industry consists not only in new drivetrains, but also in new architectures and the three layers of the software-defined car. As a consequence, historic value chains are disrupted. Hardware and software will be separated. OEMs are likely to gain value add, while suppliers will have to find a new place in the value chain of the future. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the playing field that drives the market for engineering services providers over the next years. OEMs will need technical support in many areas in order to define, integrate, and optimize new value chains for the mobility of the future. Now, we think engineering services providers will be an integral part of this transformation. Thanks to the enlargement of our service portfolio, especially in the software and digitalization area, and thanks to our independency, we are the perfect partner to support and accelerate the change. Let's move on to the next slide where I will get into more details what this change means in terms of numbers and potentials. As you may know, our business model is depending to a large extent from the R&D expenses of OEMs. Now in this chart, we show to you recent studies from the German Automotive Manufacturer Association and they estimate that the German automotive industry is going to spend around 220 billion euro for research and development until 2026. And in addition, another 100 billion euros for new or modificated plants in Germany. So this sums up to a total of 320 billion euros until 2026. And this refers only to the German automotive industry. We have not talked about other established OEMs. We have not talked about startup companies and not about companies from outside the automotive industry. This all is the total addressable market for us here at the EDA Group. So the fundamental mental transformation that I have just explained continues and OEMs and their suppliers need to invest heavily into new cars, into new models, into software and digitalization batteries, but also production facilities. We as EDARC experience a large demand and we see a growing potential for our innovative and agile business model over the next years. If you have any questions left or if you will require a meeting, please do not hesitate to contact me at any time. I will be more than happy to support you in any way. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Have a good day and bye-bye.